Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Eternal and everlasting Father. Lord, we come at this precious hour of the morning just to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for one more sunshiny day. Lord, we thank you for last night's slumber and last night's sleep. Thank you for early morning rising, dear God. Still closed and out of right mind. And look where you brought us, Master. You brought us back to the house of prayer. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you that we were able to walk in with our own two legs, dear God. Lord, we just want to say thank you. And Lord, I'm asking now that you would use me as I stand behind this sacred desk. Asking that you would speak through me, dear God. Let your anointing fall fresh upon me. You know what your people need to hear, dear God. And I'm so humbled, I'm so grateful to be just one of your instruments. We love you so much, we do lift you up. And we will forever magnify your holy name. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it all. For his sake we pray. Amen, amen, amen. 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 and amen. feel all right this morning. All right, all right. I thank God for Jesus. We certainly give honor to God who is my life. To Jesus the Christ who is and always will be the great head of the church. Give honor to the Holy Spirit who is my comforter and my God. Give honor to Elder Evans, Minister Bradley, our other Minister Bradley and Minister William. Give honor to our motherboard, our very powerful deacon staff. To each of you, my father's children on the inside of the sanctuary, and to each of you that are in the parking lot. Amen. Give honor to my own family, especially my very lovely wife, whom I thank God for every day of my life. There is a word from the Lord this morning. And if you brought your Bibles, we're going to ask that you turn with us to the Acts of the Apostles, the book of Acts. This talks about the Acts of the Apostles, mainly Peter and Paul. And two Sundays ago, we started talking about the Acts of Peter and John and this is the, the final lesson on that subject. Acts chapter 4. We're going to read verses 10 to 12. And then we're going to cover chapter 5. We'll read 25 through 32 for your understanding. Acts chapter 4. Verses 10 through 12. When you find it, I'm certain you'll find these words recorded. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, but there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Acts chapter 5, verse 25 through 32. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, but they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, 
and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostle answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. We'd like to offer for a subject taken from these passages and other supporting passages of Scripture. For God I'll live, and for God I'm willing to die. Amen. He may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For God I'll live, and for God I'm willing to die. I know we often say we love God more than anything or anybody. Dr. Martin Luther King once said, if a man have not discovered something that he's willing to die for, he's not fit to live. And I'm not trying to make anybody here say something that you really don't believe you would do. But I do pray now that someday you'll gain the courage just like that little 17 year old child had in 1999 at Columbine High School. When they asked her if she believed in God, and she boldly said yes before being shot in the head. She was willing to die for Christ. And then, and then the investigation went on and it said that the shooter asked another person that had already been wounded if they believed in God and that person said yes. And the shooter just looked at him and walked on by. And we all might be faced with that same situation one day. And you can't speak for me, and I can't speak for you. But I'm convinced that I will not let my Savior down. And I'm going to say, yes, I believe in God. And somebody said, well, Pastor, you really don't know what you would do in that situation. You might not know what you would do. But God has been too good to me. And every single day of my life, I'm living prepared to die. And if I have to die for Christ, there's no better way than reason for me to die. Why, Lacey? Why, why, why? Why would you say that, that for God you live and for God you die? Because without God, I ain't got no life, no way. I ain't got nothing without the Lord. And I can't afford to let my Savior down. And, and, and I, I do understand that to live is Christ. But listen, to die is gain. It's, it's even better. And there ain't no way I can lose. So, so my mind is, is made up. And, and this is a personal thing. You have to make up your own mind. But my mind is made up. For God, I live. And for God, I'm willing to die. I trust him with my life. What about you? Anybody here trust God with your life? Yeah. Amen. We don't have to worry, church, about the one that can just harm the body. But we need to be more concerned with the one that can, that can harm the body and the soul. That's who we need to be worried about. So we need to do God's will because he has control of everything. Our final destination. And as we unpack our text this morning, I, I just I want you to keep in mind that that we 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 we, we finish it up our study now, and we've already studied about about Peter how he, he preached his first sermon, and that was done the day of Pentecost, and and we've already discussed the first miracle that was performed by the church when Peter and John uh, healed the man that had been crippled from his mother's womb. And, and, and now today, we're about to witness the first and second persecution of the church. The church was just getting started, you see. When we, when we studied the book of Acts, Jesus had, had died. Jesus had, God had raised him from the dead. Jesus was gone back to heaven. And now, 
the church was getting started. So this is the church. This is the beginning of the church. And some very exciting things was going on. And we're going to cover a lot of information today. And I pray nobody's in a real big rush, but we, we got to cover this, this material today. A new movement was about to take place. A new movement. Something new was about to take place in Jerusalem. And the rulers and the leaders wanted it to stop. Yeah, the church was about to get started. And by the Holy Ghost, God was adding souls to the church every day. God was adding to the church. And as we look at chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, right, right in the middle, you know, on the last week, Peter was preaching. And, and while Peter was preaching, everybody was flocking, running up there to see what was going on. And, and, and Peter had just told them about Jesus, how he was crucified and how they needed to repent. Peter had just, he, he was preaching and, and while the sermon was going on, as we pick up in our lesson today, right in the middle of the sermon, here comes the priest running up there and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees, a.k.a. the Sanhedrin Council. They all made up uh, the Sanhedrin Council. When you looked at the priests, you looked at the captain of the temple, the Sadducees, the Pharisees. They all come running up there wanting to see what the commotion was about. They wanted to see what's going on in this temple. We in charge of the temple. And there's a lot of commotion going on. And, and when they got through the press, when they got through the crowd, they saw Peter and John teaching and preaching about Jesus, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And it grieved them. They were angry, so they arrested them and put them in jail overnight. They laid hold on them, and they put them in hold. They put them in jail because it was too late to have a trial. So all they could do to stop them was to just say, we're going to just put you in jail until the mob. But church, can I tell you, man can't stop God's progress. The Bible said that even, even during that short time Peter and John was preaching, about 5,000 men were added to the church. People are eager. We learned in Sunday school that, that people are eager now. They want to get to know Jesus. By the next day, the rulers, the elders, and the scribes showed up to examine the situation. They brought the Nias who was recognized as the high priest for the Jews. They brought him, and then they brought Cephas, who was serving as high priest for the Romans. They brought them, and they got, and when they got there, they, 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 they tried to really intimidate the apostles. They brought them in, and they, and, and they, and they, and they seated in a semicircle. All of these folks were sitting in the courtroom in a semicircle, and they put the apostles right in the middle and they got straight to the point. They began to question him. They said, by what power or by what name have you done this? They just said, have you done this? So, 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 so Peter said, now, <laughs> now you ain't being specific at all, but, but, now, but, now, but, now, but now, if, you, if you're talking about how this man here got healed, if you're talking about how this man that was crippled from birth is now able to walk, if, if that's what you question us about, then, then we want to tell you, it all came through the name of Jesus. Peter said, if that's what, you, if that's what you're asking us, how, how it happened, be it known unto you all and to all of the people in Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye, he looked at that council, all of them folks, he said, whom ye, crucified, whom God raised from the dead. It was by him, it was by Jesus that this man stand here completely healed right before your eyes. Now remember, church, that Peter was speaking to the top leaders of the nation. He was speaking to folks that were way up in charge. And he was charging them with the killing, with the death of not only a man, but he was charging them with the death of killing God's son, the Messiah. But notice how quickly God stepped in before Peter could answer. Before Peter could answer because God knew that Peter would just, just talk real fast. So, so God didn't give Peter a chance to speak on his own. The Bible said that being filled with the Holy Spirit, my Lord, 
Yeah, yeah. Filling him with the power of the Holy Ghost. And, and, and then Peter was able to speak through the Spirit and not on his own accord. And church, we got to learn how to wait on the Holy Spirit before we give man an answer. Especially when you know folks are trying to trip you up on something. You don't have to give them an answer just because they ask you a question. You need to say, I got to pray about it. I know the Lord is, is all right. And if we learn how to wait, God will speak through us. Well, Pastor, why were the rulers so mad with the apostles? Why were they so angry with them? They knew Peter was preaching the resurrection through Jesus Christ. They knew that's what he was preaching about. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and they had to stop it. And if they did stop it, they were going to risk losing the loyalty of the people and their position and their livelihood. They knew Peter was going to mess with their money if he started preaching another doctrine that they wasn't preaching. So they had, to, they had to try to stop it. And not only that, they felt like they were supposed to be the religious leaders. They felt like that if, if the power of God was going to come to anybody, if a miracle was going to happen at the church, they felt like it ought to happen through them. So they refused to believe that this man was healed by the name of Jesus because God didn't perform the miracle through them. Hmm. They thought the apostles would be intimidated by them, the Sanhedrin council. They, they, they thought because they, they, they had 71 members sitting in a semi-circle, they, 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 and, and, and it was presided by, by the high priest. He was in charge of it. They thought that they would intimidate these apostles. The membership was made up of Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes, or lawyers, and elders. And, and all they needed to, to have a quorum was 23, and they could make a decision. But Peter was not afraid to die for Christ. Peter said, this is the stone which was set at nothing to y'all, y'all builders, which has become the head of the corner. See, Peter quoted a scripture that came from Psalms 118 and 22. David had already said that in, in Psalms uh, about the stone that was set at naught and the builders had refused. And so they understood the scripture that Peter quoted to them. And that, and that made them mad. Peter said, and neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Peter was letting them know, y'all killed him, y'all crucified him, and now there ain't nobody that can save us but the name of Jesus. Now that hit a nerve. When Peter spoke that, that, hit a, that struck a nerve with him. And when the council saw the, the, the boldness of Peter and John, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they, they perceived that they were unlearned. In other words, they, they perceived that they didn't have no, no formal education. And then they, they, they perceived that they were ignorant folk. They, they, their speech was not intelligent at all. But one thing they did know by the boldness and by the power of Peter and John, they knew that they had been with Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you ain't got to have no kind of degrees and multiple degrees and all of that for God to use you. When you've been with the Lord, he can use you. No matter who you are, God can use you. I know the Lord is all right. And church, can I tell you that the Holy Spirit gives us power. The Holy Spirit gives us boldness to speak and teach God's word without fear. When you got the Holy Spirit, you don't have to be afraid of any man. That's the only way Dr. Martin Luther King could have preached like he did. That man knew folk were trying to kill him every day, but he still would preach the word. Because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the only way Moses could have confronted Pharaoh. He knew Pharaoh could have cut his neck off any time. But Moses would still go over there and say, you better let my people go. He had to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. And I can still remember when I was working on my job that, that I, would, I would go to the meeting with the CEO of the hospital and I would sit in the meeting with the administrators and, 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 and it was some stuff going on that I did not agree with and I said, Lord, I need you now. I need you to, to speak through me in this meeting. And I told the CEO and I told the administrator, I said, every year I'm watching the nurses, no offense, madam, 
But I said, I'm watching these nurses have their own special day. But one day out of the year is Nurses Day. And y'all bringing in food, y'all catering to them. You got Doctors Day, you're giving doctors gifts. But then my staff don't have nothing. All, all y'all expect what to do is work down here like dog. I said, I want my staff to have the same things that the nurses and the doctors are having. We want to celebrate our day. And I know they thought I was dead. I know that I know they thought I was unlearned and crazy talking to them like that. But can I tell you, God knows how to touch hearts when we don't. Every year after that, and even now, housekeeping and transportation got their own day, and they buy lunches and dinners for that department. If we wait on the Lord, I know He'll speak through us. Verses 14 through 22. After Peter got finished speaking to the Sanhedrin council, he looked at they, they looked at, at Peter. When, when Peter, Peter talked boldly to him, and they looked at Peter, but, but they saw the, the man that was healed standing right there with Peter now. This man, this man didn't even have no business in the courtroom, but he was determined. You know, I told you last week how he was holding on to Peter wherever they went. So this, this man was determined to stay by Peter and John's side. So when the Sanhedrin council looked at him, and they saw Peter and John, and they saw the, the man that was healed standing right by him, they had no case. Because they knew that, that this man was healed by the name of Jesus. And they knew this man would take the witness stand and say, I, I, I've, been, I've been crippled for 40 years. And doctor after doctor looked at me. And everybody said, I'll never walk. But when these two men said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. That man said, that's how I got healed. So they knew that they didn't have no case against him. Yeah. So they asked, they said, y'all step outside for a minute. We got to deliberate. We got we to come to some type of decision here. And they began to talk among themselves. They said, what shall we do to these men? For indeed a notable miracle uh, has taken place that nobody in Jerusalem ever going to forget. No doubt these men performed a miracle. So what should we do to them? They said, we can't deny the fact that a miracle was performed by them because the witness is still here. But this is what they said. But that, but what we can do is we can try to stop it from going any further. We can try to shut them down right now so, so that they don't go no further with what they're doing. So they said, let us threaten them and that they speak no more to no man in the name of Jesus. They wanted to threaten them now. They, they wanted to threaten their lives. Uh, so they called the apostles back in and they commanded them, whatever you do, you can preach about Moses, you can preach about anybody you want to preach about. But they said, don't you ever speak again or teach in the name of Jesus. Now, Randy, I, I, I got to tell you, if somebody come in here right now and threaten me and tell me I can't preach about Jesus, y'all ain't going to have Pastor Lacey. Because if I can't preach about Jesus, I ain't got nothing else to preach about. This Bible is all about Jesus. And if we don't preach about Jesus, we ain't preaching. For God I live, and for God I'm willing to die. So when we look at verse number 19, Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, y'all be the judge. He said, y'all y'all judge that yourself. If you think we're we going to listen to, to y'all more than we listen to God, y'all, y'all, that's on y'all. He said, but as for us, we cannot help but to speak the things which we have seen and the things which we have heard. Right. Pastor, what was Peter talking about? But Peter saw, he saw Jesus, y'all. He saw Jesus raised from the dead. He knew they crucified him. He saw him on the cross. But he knew Jesus was alive. He saw that with his own eyes. What did he hear? He heard God speak to them out on the mountain of transfiguration when God said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. Peter knew what he had saw and he knew what he had heard and he said, we can't help but to preach the things we have seen and heard. I know the Lord is, is all right. Peter said, we, we even saw him raise Lazarus from the dead. We've seen Jesus do some things and we're going to continue to preach about it. We saw him opening blinded eyes and we're going to preach about it. 
We're not going to hearken unto you. We're going to obey God. I know the Lord is all right. Saints, can I tell you that no matter what you face with in this life, no matter how folks threaten you, when you pray and God give you an answer, make sure you obey God and not man. So after Peter said, we're going we gonna to go on, we're going to keep on preaching in the name of Jesus, they threatened him again, and, and then they let him go because they had no fault to hold him. They had no reason to hold him, so they threatened him one more time, and they let him go. Now, when you look at verses 23 through 31, I want you to notice what Peter and John did as soon as they let them go. Peter didn't go fishing. Y'all know the last time when, when, when they crucified Jesus, Peter said, I'm going fishing. But not this time. Now, Peter at this time was a whole nother man. Peter, Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. So Peter didn't go fishing. But when they let him go this time, Peter went straight to the church. And he gave the church a full report. He gave the congregation a full report of everything that the chief priests and the elders had said unto them. Now that's important for us as believers to know because we should be able to come to the church as believers. Whenever somebody is threatening us, whenever somebody is, is, is mistreating us, we ought to be able to come to the church and we ought to be able to get on one accord and pray for that brother or that sister and God will deliver them and he'll do it on time. So Peter went straight to the church and he told them everything that had happened. He told them how they were threatening everything. He told them this. And, 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 and I want to tell you, anybody here know that prayer still works? It still works, I tell you. Prayer still works. So we need to keep on praying. Even in the midst of persecution, we still need to keep on praying. And God won't let you fail. The Bible said in verse number 24, when the church lifted up their voice to God on one accord. That's the key. That's the key. When we, when, when we got a member that's in trouble, I'm telling you, the church got to learn how much power we have. We got power. The church has power. And if we got a member that's sick, and we got a member that's in trouble, and they come to the church for prayer, and we get on one accord, and we pray to the Lord, God will hear and answer prayer. This is what they did. The Bible said the church lifted up their voice to God with one accord. And this is what they said. Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that's in it. Hmm. Rather, we got to understand something. We got to understand that the early church suffered persecution. So we're going to suffer persecution as well. As believers today, we're going to suffer persecution. Christ said that we would. Christ said that, 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 that if you don't suffer with me, then you can't reign with me. So he, he knows we're going to suffer, and we know we're going to suffer. But when we pray, God knows how to deliver us from whatever we're going through. And I don't know about you, but I have made up my mind. For God, I live. And for God, I'm willing to die. Somebody said, well, Lacey, you ain't, you ain't happy staying on this earth. You don't want to just be here long? Yeah, like anybody. I would like to live a long life. Ain't that what Dr. King said? Longevity has its place. But for me, all I want to do, I'm concerned with doing God's will. That's what I'm concerned with right now. If he spared me to live a long life, I'm grateful. If he called me, I'm ready to go. Now watch this. Our suffering and our abuse. It may come in the form of somebody getting angry with us. Uh, it may come in the form of somebody slandering our name. Anybody ever had your name slandered out there? That's a form of abuse. It may come from violence where somebody actually put their hands on you. It may come through isolation where folks won't, won't have nothing to do with you. They just push you to the side. That's a form of persecution. And, and these things may happen. It could happen in the marketplace. It could happen on the job. It could happen at home. It could happen in the community. It could happen in school. And don't you know it can also happen at the church? But here's the deal. I got a news flash for you. What believers need is not to be delivered from persecution. But what we need is the victory over persecution. 
Believers need a conviction of our mission. We need a conviction so strong that we become immovable and we're able to stand for the Lord no matter what's going on. Now, 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 I want you to notice how Peter and John were not depressed. They had just come out of this trial. They had just been threatened, but they were not depressed, they were not discouraged, and they were not downcast. Neither were they trembling in fear. They were not scared. Their life had been threatened, but they still refused to hold their peace about the goodness of God. When Peter and John came to the church, they wanted to encourage the body. They wanted them to be aware of the persecution that was coming their way. Because Peter knew that if they, if they persecuted him and John, it was going to make its way to the church. So he was trying to get them prepared. Hmm. Peter told them how God defended them in the court of law. And what I love about the church, this is what I love about the church. When Peter came to the church, nobody in the church even thought about quitting on God. They didn't even think about that. But nowadays, as soon as somebody tells us that, that my idea is better than yours, you walk away from the church. As soon as somebody tells you we ain't going to serve chicken this, this week, you leave the church. Little stuff will make you walk away and quit on God. But can I tell you that if we're going to be the church God is calling for, we got to stop wearing our feelings on our shirt sleeve. We as believers are commanded to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We got a responsibility. Our Sunday school teacher told us this morning, we got a responsibility to God. The church came together with one accord, meaning that they prayed with one mind and one spirit. They focused and they concentrated upon what was being prayed for. When somebody comes to the church and says, I need prayer for this or for that, whatever they tell you they're going through, that's what we ought to be praying for. Our mind don't need to be on our own personal things, but when we come to the church, we all need to be on one accord if we want God to intervene. Their mind was not wandering. They was focused when they came to the church and they began to pray. And when you have prayer warriors that come together and pray, God will be a God in the midst. Yeah, I know I'm right about it because in the text they told God all about their struggles. When you look at verse number 27, they said, For a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. He said, For to do whatever thy hand and thy counsel determined beforehand to be done. And now, Lord, they, they pray, y'all. They said, and now, Lord, behold, their threats are directed toward us. And with my spiritual ear, I can hear the church saying, Lord, you don't have to move my mountain, but just give us the strength to climb. And they ask God to grant them boldness to stand firm and speak the word of God with power. That's what they ask God to do. Just give us the boldness that we need. You don't have to, you don't have to remove us from this persecution to just give us the strength to be able to stand and to go through it. See, God don't intend for every time we got a problem in our life, God don't intend for us to, to get out the problem so easy. Sometimes it's meant for us to go through it so when we go through it, we'll come out stronger than we were before we went into it. Thank the Lord all right. They said, Lord, not only do we need the, the boldness and the power, they said, but there's one more thing we need. They said, when we stretch forth our hands to heal, give us that power and anointing in Jesus' name. Because we want to be able to perform signs and wonders like never before by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. Because, see, see, because these officials, they, they were mad and they thought that, 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 the, that the man was not healed in the name of Jesus. So Peter said, if they think that's something, give us some power. Well, we can do some wonders before them. And everything we do, it ain't going to be in our name. Peter said it's going to be in the holy child name of Jesus. I wish y'all could have could have been there. God was listening to their prayer. He let them know that he was with them in their prayers, and he answered them. After they finished praying, the Bible said the place where they were assembled together was shaken. It was shaken, y'all. They were in there praying. 
And after they got through praying to God, the whole building began to shake. And they knew, they knew that it was just like that mighty rushing wind that came through on the day of Pentecost. They knew God was in the building. And, and, and this is what happened here. Every believer in the room was filled with the Holy Ghost. And they all began to speak the word of God with boldness. God had answered their prayer. Why? Because they was on one accord. They came together as a church. And rather than we ever come together as a church, we can move mountains out here in this heaven, sister city. Now, as we hurry to a close, I want us to look at chapter 5. In chapter 5, verse 12, it says, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders done among the people. By the hands of the apostles, God granted their prayer. They began to do many signs, many wonders. Uh, won't God do what he said he'll do? Won't he do a church? The apostles was all on one accord in Solomon's porch. Verse 13 said, And no other man joined them, but the people magnified them. I think I ought to tell you that, that other folk can't join you if they ain't been filled with the Holy Ghost. All they can do is watch you from a distance, but they can't do what you do if they're not anointed, they're not filled with the Holy Spirit from the Lord. In verse number 14 of chapter 5, it said, And the believers were added the more to the Lord, to the church, both men and women. God was still adding to the church. The power of God was working like never before. When you look at verse number 15, the, the power of God was working like never before, and God was getting the glory. The Bible said, it's so much that they brought the sick folk into the street, and they laid them on beds and couches. You ought to be able to see it with your spiritual eyes. They, they, they bring in all these sick folk. They laid them on their, on their little portable beds. They laid them on couches because they knew Peter and John was there. They knew they were performing miracles. And all of a sudden, the streets started getting full of sick folks, folks with diseases. And they brought them there. And the folks would, would, would just say, if, if the shadow of Peter would just pass by me, if his shadow would pass by me and touch me, I believe I'll be healed. And God was performing miracles just like that through his apostles. My God can do anything. The word had gotten all over town. And then, then, then there came also a multitude out of the cities surrounding Jerusalem. And they were bringing sick folk. They were bringing other folks that were vexed with, with unclean spirit. They were possessed with demons. And the apostles healed, it, healed every one of them. Through the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, I wish you could have been there when I came through. The church was on fire with the Holy Ghost too. The church was on fire back then with the Holy Ghost present. They said, I know for myself I've been changed. The angels in heaven didn't sign my name. Some folks was witnessing. They had a, a great day to witness the power of the Lord. But always remember, church, when things are going well in the church, Satan is going to try to kill the spirit. Every time, without fail, when things are going well in the church, when we're progressing, when, when things are going well, when folks are getting along in the church, you just might as well start looking. Because Satan is coming. In verse number 17, while all the people were being healed and blessed, here come the high priest and all the persecutors. They were jealous and they were angry about this movement of the church of Jesus Christ. And they laid hands on them and they put them in common prison. They put them in prison with other convicts. Oh, but I wish you could have been there to see God show up and see God show out. The angel of the Lord opened the prison doors at night. Yeah. God told the angel, don't waste no time. Let my believers know that I'm right here with them. And I got their back. Anybody here know God got your back? If he bring you to it, he sure enough will take you through it. So the angel got in a hurry. And that same night, the angel of the Lord came into the prison and told Peter and John, get up, let's go. The angel said, get up, let's go. He said, God wants y'all to go right back to the temple and preach it in the name of Jesus. So that morning, Peter and John went right back to the temple and began to preach about Jesus. And no one knew that the apostle was even out of the jail. So the next morning, when the, when the leaders came, they, 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 they were so mad when they came. The next morning, they came and, and the leaders said, y'all bring them to us. And when they got to the jailhouse, they looked and they saw the guard on the outside. 
standing like he a big man with his pistol. And then when they walked past him, they got inside the jailhouse and saw the other guard standing there, thinking that them boys were still in jail. And when they walked in there, they saw everything intact, but they said the men that y'all put in jail ain't here. They gone. They gone. And these folks begin to wonder, oh my Lord, what gonna happen to us? We didn't let them escape, we gonna be in trouble. And about that time, somebody came to him and said, you know them men which y'all locked up last night? They, they at the temple preaching in Jesus' name again. Ain't the Lord all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then when you look at verse number 26, <laughs> the captain and the police officers ran over there. And, and this time when they got to Peter and John, they were so embarrassed. They were so embarrassed, but they wanted to be cool about it. So they walked up to them and tried to act like they weren't mad, but they were 38 hot. Uh -huh. They act like they weren't mad. They said, can y'all come with us for just a minute? We just want to talk to you a minute. And see, they had to do that because if they had laid hands on Peter and John, all them folks that were being healed, they were going to kill them. So they were smart not to touch them like that. So without violence, they brought them on to jail. Oh, but, but when they got to that jailhouse, my Lord, they went off. They said, did we not tell y'all? Didn't we tell you? <laughs> Didn't we tell you? Didn't we straightly command you not to teach in this man's name? Didn't we tell you? Point the finger at him. <laughs> they did it again. Yeah, 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 yeah. They said, they said we straightly told y'all. They brought him back in court, y'all. And they said, we told y'all. We told y'all not to preach or teach in this man's name. Didn't we tell you? He said, and not only y'all teach it, y'all have filled all of Jerusalem with this doctrine, and y'all intended to bring this man blood on us. Y'all telling the folks it's our fault. That's when Peter spoke up and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Peter said, I ain't scared of you no more. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to obey God. For God I live, and for God I'm willing to die. But don't you preach in this man's name no more. 
<laughs> yeah, they, they told them y'all can go after they beat them. Yeah, but whatever you do, they said, don't, don't you preach in the name of Jesus no more. As soon as they let them go, those boys began to rejoice and praise the Lord. They were happy just to be able uh, to suffer for Jesus Christ. Huh? They counted it all joy. Ain't the Lord all right? Uh, I can see Peter and John uh, giving each other uh, a high five, uh, saying, uh, yeah, they beat us uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, but that's all right. Uh, by his stripes, uh, we are healed. Uh, anybody him know it? Uh, with my spiritual ear, uh, I can hear uh, both of them saying, uh, for God I live, uh, and for God uh, I'm willing to die. Uh, the Bible said uh, every day uh, they went back to the temple. Uh, they were not afraid. Uh, they went on back to the temple, uh, and when they left the temple, uh, they would go uh, from house to house, uh, preaching uh, and teaching uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, ain't the Lord all right? Uh, they never stopped uh, preaching God's word. Uh, and church, uh, I ain't going to stop uh, preaching the word of God. Uh, every day, uh, the blood run warm in my veins. Uh, I'm going to tell the world uh, about my Savior. Uh, I got a maid of mine. Uh, I ain't going to let nobody turn me around. Uh, church, uh, if there ever was a time uh, that you ought to have a maid of mine, uh, your mind uh, ought to be made up right now. Uh, anybody here, uh, are you on the battlefield? Uh, anybody here, uh, are you working for the Lord? Uh, I'm reminded of the same man, John. Uh, one day, uh, they told John, uh, if you don't stop uh, preaching uh, and teaching about Jesus, uh, they told him, uh, we going to put you out on the island of Patmos. I, I wish y'all could have been there uh, before they could get through talking to Peter. Uh, Peter said, uh, he rose, uh, he rose. Uh, John said, uh, he rose, uh, he rose. Uh, they told John, uh, we going to put you out there on the island. But John kept on preaching, uh, ain't the Lord all right? Uh, John said, uh, you can do what you want to do to me. Uh, you can scandalize my name. Uh, you can put a knife to my throat. Uh, but I'm going to keep on preaching uh, about Jesus Christ. Uh, anybody here know him? Uh, John said uh, in the book of Revelation, uh, I was in the spirit uh, on the Lord day. Uh, John said, uh, I was preaching uh, God's word. Uh, and he heard behind him a voice. Uh, and it was Jesus talking to him. Jesus said, John, I'm so proud of you. John, I'm so thankful for you. He said, I'm Alpha and I'm Omega. I'm the beginning and I'm the end. He told John, I got more work for you to do. I want you to write to the churches of Asia Minor. Ain't God all right? John refused to stop preaching. And I refuse to stop preaching. I'm determined to do the master's will. You can tell everybody in the world that they should say, for God I live. And for God I'm willing to die. Because if I ain't got Jesus, I'm dead anyway. Everybody here. Anybody here determined to live for Jesus. All of your days, are you determined to live for him? No matter what you're going through, are you determined to stay on this battlefield? The doors of the church is open. The doors of the church is open. But there'll be one. Might not know the Lord in the pardon of your sins. Today is your day. You ought to give your life to Jesus. Oh, the man gave it all. He gave his life for you and I. You ought to come to Jesus right now while you still have time. You ought to give yourself away. You ought to want God to use you. I told the Lord I'd give myself away. 
so you, so you can use me, Lord. I want to be used by God. He is the keeper of our souls. He is the lifter of our heads. Church, you ought to give yourself away now. You ought to get to the point where you understand that it ain't about you. It ain't about me. But it's all about Jesus. And what I love about it is every day of my life, the Lord gives us another chance. Anybody know God is still blessing us every day of our life? It's all about God. It ain't nothing about you and I. Everything I have belongs to God. Everything you have belongs to God. And he will keep you. God will keep you in his keeping care. But you got to have a made of mind. For God, I live. And for God, I'm willing to die. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. You do not have to be afraid. If God means the world to you, if he means everything to you, you ought to be willing to die. He died for you and I. That we might have a right to the tree of life. You may come by ladder baptism or by Christian experience.
on Willie Bradley and family, the Garrett family, the Crooks family, the Rich, the Reaper Richmond and family, Mother Amira Watkins, Sister Betty Russell, Melvin and Bunny Hodge, Mr. and Mrs. Hughes, Willie McClendon, Mother Lily Lacey, Sister Mary Berry, Devin, Devin Watson, Frankie Watson, Sister Vivian Kelly, the Turner family, the Williams family, Felicia Smith, Sister Jean White, to Wanda Mixon, Burnett, Lucy Johnson and family, Linda Gaddis and family, the Tucker family, Sister German, a uh, brother Rudy, which is Sister Linda Gaddis' brother, Willie Hill, Mr. Wilson, George Brooks, Sister Hazel and family, Sister Dupree and family, Willie Moore and family, J.R. Griffin, Mother E. Harvey, Willie D. Bradley, Minister May Bradley, Sister Ann Harvey, um, Sister Anderson, and Baby Carter.